in Turkana. There has been some laxity, you know, from past governments, past committees, including Committee of Security and Administration in the past, where the issue of cattle rustling, the issue of the North, is seen as something that has been happening before most of us have, were born, that has been happening since independence. And so it is taken as a game that in that region, you know, it's, it's, it's their thing and they need to sort themselves out and that it, it will continue even beyond now. And so even as I make my presentation and submissions, I pray that this committee looks at it and looks at this issue seriously and please leave a legacy that as a committee you made firm recommendations and even followed through with the implementation of what you will you will have recommended in the house so that it will be re remembered that it was during your time that we brought this to an end i want to quickly say and without uh, tiring you and i want to thank the members of the community and especially one man lalkalipi from losuk who actually i have been talking to him since these incidents have started and I told him to record every single incident because as a country we have to start valuing life. It cannot just be one person killed today, two people. As you will see from the report from last year, August, we have lost 54 citizens of this country in Samburu West. We have 28 people maimed we and we have listed them we have put as evidence in our report we have livestock that have been lost and we have listed the numbers um there i also want to say that and i know you know this as a committee that we'll be basing our presentation on article 238 one of our constitution which defines national security to include the protection against internal and external threats to Kenya's territorial integrity and sovereignty, its people, their rights, freedoms, property, peace, stability and prosperity, and other national interests. It is against this backdrop and the Bill of Rights enshrined in Chapter 4 of the Constitution that the ongoing evictions, as it not only contributes to gross violation of fundamental human rights, but also consequently undermines the national security of these people, and especially Samburu West. And without tiring you with some of the, of the general overview, we have to look at the human dignity of the people of Samburu West. We have to look at the right to property and right to housing. I'll mention what has happened to them and also right to safety and security, it is their right. And right to education, and finally, right to life. I will not go into the details, you will read in the report. I want to say two things. And I want to put into perspective, and I thank the members who visited Don Kaunya and the rest, you actually have a background. Now when we talk about Samburu West, and the conflict that we have there, you have a background of it. Samburu West, we border Tiati constituency. And the entire belt where we have conflict is where our boundary is. And I want to say here that even when members we will come and keep asking you to identify our boundaries, we actually know where our boundary is. We are not going to trust this committee to tell us where our boundary is. We know where our boundary is as a sub-county and even as a constituency. Unfortunately, our brothers, and initially it used to be criminals, you know, who will just come and steal and steal. But over time we have seen the trend is now changing. It is systemic, it is planned. It is no longer just the usual cattle theft. It is about land. It is about pushing uh, the people of Samburu West away from their land so that those uh, who border us can actually uh, inhabit uh, that area. And you know, we, it, is, it is in public knowledge, and it is even there in the community, where the Samburus call the Pukot Suk, Suk, you know, Suk. We have an area called Losuk. It is a ward, Losuk. 
and so severally because we are privy to what are discussed in even WhatsApp groups and everywhere. They claim that Losuk is their place, it is their land. While in Samburu, we have a tree called Loisuk, which grows in Losuk. And that is why the Samburus called it Losuk. We cannot base our traditional namings, our trees, our what, to claim ownership of an area or land. We go by the boundaries of this country, which were set by this country. And so, if those, for those of you who visited, and I want to also give a perspective, it is an entire belt, an entire belt from Suguta, from, and then you go to a place called Longewan, you go to a place called Olmolok, you go to a place called Longewan, you go to a place called Poro, Siambu, Lowaiti, all the way to Morijo, where we border. So what has happened is that then, because of insecurity, the members of the public have moved away about, you know, several kilometers inward of Samburu West. And what has happened then is that people then go and live in settlements. While people in Samburu West, and that is why in my last term, we really focused on subdivision of our land so that people can actually have title deeds. And in the last regime, we were able to give out 10,000 title deeds so that people can actually own their land. And so issues of ownership on our side is not there. We have title deeds, but the unfortunate thing is that then the members of the public cannot live where they've been given the title deed because of insecurity. They have all moved upwards to come and live in settlements. Then what happens in these settlements? The issues that I had raised earlier are then affected right to education. They have left the schools far away. They have moved. And if you've, uh, those of you visited my constituency, because the mindset that we have is that Samburus and, uh, you know, all the pastoralists, they're backward, there's no development, they don't want education, they are thugs, they are criminals. In Samburu West, people have settled. Just like any other counties that you come from and constituencies. Our people want to go to school, they want to be educated, and that is why sometimes people keep asking me, but also Zamburu West in Mujipange, you people go and, and, and fight. We don't even have young people to go and fight in Zamburu West. That is why we are being killed left, right, and center. It's because a majority of our people embraced education. They went to school. If I want to look for young boys to go and kill, I have to go remove them from school. They go and fight. Nianze kuwa train again. You know, when we were told to, de to return guns some time back, so we, we even, sometimes even as leaders, you want to tell them who told you to return those guns. Because they returned the guns. Most of them went to buy border borders, and they are now border border riders. They are doing their businesses. And so I just wanted to emphasize the issue of boundary for us. We know where the boundaries are, but we have been pushed up so that we now live in settlements. Many guys actually, even in the CS, when we mentioned that we have IDP camps in, uh, in, in Saburu West, they thought we were joking. These committee members saw people are living in round, you know, a big place, health issues, there is no water, children are not going to school there because there is no school there. There is, you know, just poverty, and people continue to become poor in that settlement. What happens to those children that then don't go to school? They have seen their father and mother killed. They now become those young people who will then continue now with the cycle. And that is why the issues of insecurity will not end in those, in those areas. And so I have two concerns with the issue of boundary. And I'll, as I give a suggestion of what needs to be done, and that is what the community also said. One, Tiati constituency and Baringo County to stop building in Saburu County. We have a school in Nasur, which is in Samburu Central, which is in Samburu West, where they have built a school. And you need to investigate how another constituency can be allowed to build in Samburu West or to build in Baringo, to build in, 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 in Samburu County. And we have one of the members who's been bragging all around. And you, I wish even one day you can call us. You call me, I talk the way I'm talking with the, my counterpart of Tiati. Let him also raise his issues so that you can make an informed decision 
because I will say it exactly here. And I've been one of the greatest peace ambassadors in this region, and I still stand by it. I have never told my people to go and, and uh, reiterate or to go and fight. But then I've realized even if we do peace efforts without digging deeper, without looking at these issues, we will be peaceful for a year, for two, for ten, as we have been before these incidences, and then it will come back because we've not dealt with the wound, the real issues there. And so I hear some of them saying, by the way, we've conquered Samburu West. We've really pushed them up. We are now doing the roads ourselves. We are building the schools ourselves. I mean, as Chair had said, in this century, we cannot be talking about conquering each other as a community and as a people. We cannot allow talking about conquering. And, and I just want to say, so I said about investigating why then funds are used to, 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 to build in, in our area. Number two, on issues of boundaries. So what has happened with the placement of security agents, GSU, and uh, you know the placement of security agents, they have come up where we, are, where we live. Uh, Mushima, maybe before you go to GSU yeah. and police camps, maybe you can expound a little bit on the, on the issue of, uh, I think, uh, CDF project being constructed in another constituency. Oh, what I mean is this. So there is a, there is a, I said there is a school called Nasur. There is an area called Nasur. It is in Samburu West or in Samburu uh, 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 Central Sub County. But Tiati constituency has built two classrooms there. Uh, Baringo County, I think ECD, has been built there. And what I, I'm, I'm raising and what I know for a fact is that is one of the strategies of building there so that you will claim that it is ours. It is a strategy. Because now you say, but we are the ones who have done development. You're seeing that school there. You're doing that there. And I know the argument that one of the members has been raising, that then why don't you, Samburu County, uh, take care of those people? Actually, one of the members said, actually, the, uh, the member that I border keeps saying and insisting, and if you called him here, he will say that those are not my people, you know? Those are people who live in Samburu, West or Central. If that is the case, then why are you interested with them? Why don't you leave me as the MP to build there? If, if they are my people, w what is your business then? Do building? they equally do the roads, Kara roads? I, I don't know about the Kara roads, but I know that the county is opening up on that side. While we are ready ourselves, the governor the other day when we, you were there, you saw, we were launching the opening of those roads. As a county, we are ready to open our roads, but these people cannot allow us. When we were building, when I was building an NPR uh, with CDF, um, NPR security camp, they shot at my contractor. And the more now we will try to open up those areas and even do development, and even these issues that we've been discussing, actually when you left on the 18th, they attacked on 24th. And I want my counterpart to come and say here, when my people have gone to attack them, they are always the ones attacking us and killing us and doing everything that is wrong. Let him come and list, let him come with a, with a list like the one I have come with here. So they, they, we are ready to open up. But we can't even go open because of the way now the, of insecurity. Even contractors are afraid to go there. So they take us up so that them now they can open up. Then in future when you go there, they will claim and say, but we are the ones who did this road. We are the ones who, who, open, who built that school. And so these are the systemic issues that I'm saying. We have to deal with them. When we just talk about peace, we are covering up these issues and it will continue to come up. Chair, if you allow, I will get all the details and present to where I have a title deed. Like there, we have a river called Amaya. This side is Tiati, we have no dispute, and this side is Abu. Chair, yeah, can I? Chair, yeah, can I seek some clarification? Yes. Um, you remember this past year we only went to because of insecurity. And so uh, the same thing I was saying now, we'll have food insecurity, people will not, not have food. While people normally from the uh, uh, Uko arid areas come to West, carry food, go to... So we are able to feed ourselves if we have security. So I was saying, 
we need to have a strategic way. Our governor that day also, there are two camps, big camps that the county government had invested in. And so that we also realize that we are using government resources to invest, but they don't serve the purpose. You saw Malasso, you saw um, an area called Parashao. The county, last county government had built a big uh, camp for the rangers and NPR. It was vandalized. People were chased away from that camp. The current governor again is putting resources to rehabilitate. Surely, how can now we're using government money separately in the same place? The governor that day we had to give GSU and NPRs to give security to the to the contractor to rebuild Le Parashao uh, security camp so that we hope that then the NPRs will move there. But we are requesting that also the GSU, the us to everybody who is there to move with the NPRs to the border so that people can go to their homes. If you fly over, you will see permanent homesteads, not manyatas, permanent homesteads. People have run away from their homes. Those are their investments. So we want people to, to live there. And that should be treated as urgent. It's just a matter of relooking at the structure and remove and uh, moving the, the security uh, uh, personnel. And as a county and also CDF, we are ready to offer the support that we can to the security uh, personnel. When there was a declaration of um, operation, you remember that the CS asked people to move from their homes because there will be an operation. Samburu West obliged. We were ready to leave our homes if it was going to bear any fruit. That is why people moved and went to live in those camps that you saw people living in. We moved. We became IDPs in our own place and we even told Kindiki we are, it's fine if if it's going to, we're going to cooperate with the government. And we moved. Unfortunately, what happened is that then KDF was sent to an area called, ne just next to Losuk, Nolkera, inside, the, what I was talking about, inside. They've now set camp, they've set a base there. We are being killed every day. Actually, sometimes they don't even come out. Um, actually, I must comment, because sometimes as leaders, we also have to be truthful. If government has done something somewhere, you say they have. When they've not, you say they haven't. And so, Jess, you are really doing a good job and uh, us to, to help us. But now the army, I really don't understand why they are there. And when we ask sometimes why you don't even come out when livestock just pass n nearby, they tell us we don't have the power. We are not supposed to to internal. We don't deal with internal issues. So why are you there? As in, so why were you sent there? It is true, you have no powers internally. Please go to, to Rukana where they have another issue of our borders <laughs> at, at, the, at the boundary or go to Northeastern. Because honestly, people of Samburu West were so hopeful when they saw the army, they thought bus. Now we can go back to our land, we can whatever. But they are just inside there with the community They've set camp properly. And another thing we have to be careful with the issues of army. We are aware and I'm aware, like in Baragoi, where they came in long time ago. Once they set camp, and I'm sure the vice chair can help me with this, they never leave. They now take, they leave, they now take area. We need our land. Now that we've given them camp, they are staying there, but they're saying we, there's nothing much we can do inward, you know. So really, is it our land you want? Why then are you there? You have to make serious recommendations on the deployment of the army internally and what role then they, are, they should be able to play. Because if, if you even think, of, so you know, so we moved thinking they're coming, then they'll do operation, flush out the criminals. Because I also have to tell you something about my counterparts from Tiati. They enjoy the, the terrain. So we live at the uplands. Once you just go down where they live, you can't access them. So they come up, kill, kill people, steal livestock. Once livestock, that's why we are unable to recover this livestock. Once they just go down the valley, you can as well forget about those livestock. So as I say that, I want to give a third recommendation to the committee. Please, we need to open up those areas. We need security roads. 
uh, NPR and also the GSU and I said us to sometimes they follow, follow, follow until the end, until you're frustrated. You see now your livestock gone, going, going. While they are ready to actually follow through if there was a proper road. And that's what I was saying. The county government has started to open up some roads. If now the national government can partner with them, where the county government probably because of the resources where they are able to reach, then the county government, uh, the national government goes ahead. So when you're doing your budgets, please, I've been looking through sometimes um, uh, when it comes, I see other areas. Please look at us with a compassionate eye and always ask, is there some rural west? At least one road, one road every financial year. For, to open up the area so that the people can can live in those uh, areas other development i assure you ourselves we are ready to put our resources walk the talk to 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 make sure our people go to school all the things that government has been talking about the other issue is that um, so that i wanted to talk about the opening up of of roads as i conclude and as i talk about one of the other critical things that um, was raised is that um, we need a sub-county. I tried to push this the last term, but it seems I didn't follow the right channels, which now we have done. After you left, we've done public participation uh, where people raised their, their views. And the reason why, because I know later, you know, what I said about governments, when they don't want to help you, they'll always come up with an excuse. Now, now they'll start saying, but there's no population, Oh, but you know, this one purely is not even based on population and other services and other good things that come with a sub county. For us, it is purely for security reasons. Because, so, and you know, others will also tell you, even where they are suggesting a headquarter, it is so close to Maralal town. But hello, people have been killed in areas, Lobonkare is just a few kilometers to Maralal town, and we're not getting the, the services that we should be getting. So what we're saying is that we need a headquarter, preferably at Losuk, so that it covers this side and this side. It's like at the middle. Once we have the sub-county there, it, the people operating there, the sub-county headquarters, will be able to deploy. The commandant now will plan the security issues of that of that whole entire belt because my sub county is actually big it covers it touches up to samburu north samburu north um, the area where we have problems is in samburu central so that we have administratively samburu central and we have the constituency samburu west so we actually qualify to have a sub county and i really hope that this uh, committee will expedite for us this we believe it will really help us with that entire belt. We map the sub-county to, to cover that belt. It will really help us so that we get divisions and all that. Issues of boundaries, yeah, as I said, that's, we, are not, we don't have conflict about that. The areas where they're building, Nasur, I have a sub-chief there. Uh, Amaya, I have a sub-chief. Uh, you know, I have sub-chiefs in those areas that they're building and, and claiming that it is their place. And so um, I want to end uh, my my submissions there and just say two things one even as you plan and as you do your report wanting even to mention members of parliament mcas or anybody who is involved in these issues and i want to say this categorically before this committee there is no leader from the north who is worth their salt who can claim that I have no idea of what happens there, or that there are raids in their constituency and they have no idea, then you're not worth your salt and you're lying. You're lying. <coughs> because I come from Samburu West constituency. There are two times I had to, to personally be involved in talking to my young people who were so bitter. When a student was killed, you will see here, I have a Form 4 student, two Form 4 students who were killed, who, were, who just got their results. That mother, you even wonder what to tell her. She sold all her livestock to educate this young boy. He got his results, he was killed at home. Not having gone to a raid, killed at home. He got a C plus, he was going to university. That day the youths came together, they said, today we will go kill on for courts and everything. As a leader, I am aware what is going on in my constituency. And I went and I spoke to those young people and they, they heeded to my call. 
I talked to them, I talked to them. And so leaders who keep claiming from the north that those are just criminals, those are just I don't know what, how can a sub-chief not be aware of what is going on in their, in their area? Why can that sub-chief call you as the leader? You as the leader, what, what, what message are you giving your people? If you're giving your people the message and information that that is our land, that we have to go and conquer, that we have to go and do what? What do you expect those people to do? They will go and kill people. And today I want to ask here categorically, how many people are enough? How many people do you want? We line up for you, do a shoot range, kill them, then leave us. Tell us how many you want. If you want 100 people, we give you. If, so that you stop it. Because you can't be a leader and you, you, you keep using those statements within your people and then expect those people to, to, to not go and, and fight. And so I want to say this. Even as the security officers and the ministry, and even you probably who will recommend, Please stop building more warlords. If you know there will be no evidence, if you know you will not prosecute these people until they are jailed and rotten in jail, do not arrest them. Because what you do when you arrest them, you, you, you build them. If you notice when they leave DCI headquarters, they normally do this. Who do you think they are doing this to, to the cameras? They are doing this to their people to show that I am a hero, that you know I stood for you, I conquered you. Then what happens after that? They now go back again to the ground and say, you saw what I... What happens? Those people are normally almost re-elected, uh, uh, what is it called? Unopposed. Then they come back again to Bunge, continue with this nonsense. Then again, they are arrested. Nobody follows through in court. Nobody uh, makes sure that they're then answerable to it. They come out again from DCI with the handcuffs like this. The business continues there. And so you have to recommend serious penalties if there are evidence and everything. Those people should not even run. They should not be leaders at any, at any given point. And so I just wanted to say as you make those recommendations and you talk to the security guys, they stop building for us warmongers and, and people who, if, if really they will not follow follow through with, with uh, arresting the, the, these people and serious measures be taken. Because they, they brag and all that. And even the professionals from these areas, please let us be people who speak peace, who want our people to live in peace and live the lives that we, person, we ourselves live and not the lives that they are living in those areas. So thank you very much. I just hope that this impunity will end and will end even um, uh, with our leaders. You will notice that it's so unfortunate. There are people who've been killed. Their bodies have never even been recovered. They've not been collected because of the terrain. So people, mothers are still waiting for their sons. They've never been, um, been collected. The bodies have not been collected. We have stated that. I must say, as I said, we commend where work has been done. Thank you for your support before. And even the CS, internal security, CS Kindiki, he added for us NPR. It is good to give uh, credit because of the, of, of the issues. He came and he saw the, the problems that we are having. He added NPR. Of course, we have some hotspots which still need more support. But he, he stepped in in, the, in that case, and we hope that we can even get more just for the hot spot. So you can be sure as the, leader of Sambu, as the leaders of Samburu County, and even myself as the MP, we will accord you the support that you need from our side. Once us, we are peaceful, we have no business going to kill anybody from Tiati. We have no business taking an inch of Tiati constituency. We have no business bothering with anything to do with Baringo County. We just want to live peacefully in Samburu West and in Samburu County so that we go on with our business and that people can live their lives as God intended them.